I love a good movie title. I'm a big believer in having a great title for your film, whether it's a short or feature length project. The title of your movie is like meeting someone for the first time. It's the first impression of your story and can be a powerful and free marketing tool, especially for us micro budget indies who may not have much of a marketing budget at all. Today I want to cover the three things that I think make a great movie title and later I'm going to use these three parameters to rate my own films found here on YouTube to see if they pass or fail. Now before we get started, I think it's safe to say that the title of your movie should clue the potential viewer into what your movie is really about. Now genre titles are the best at this. When you hear a name like The Evil Dead, Star Wars, or Snakes on a Plane, you know exactly what you're in for. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have those vague character name titles. And it's rare that a name alone will create interest unless it's tied to a famous novel or property. Think Disney here. Now we indies can never afford to option such properties, but remember, the public domain is your friend. Okay, first up, your title needs to be unique so it's easy to find. And remember, if you want your film to stand out from the crowd, you don't want people to confuse it with a hundred other films with the same name. Now, common words or phrases, especially cool ones, have probably already been used as the title for a movie. Check the Internet Movie Database, or IMDb.com. If your title is already in use, you may want to reconsider. Chrysalis, for example, is a great word, but a ton of other filmmakers have already used it as the title of their film. Try something else. Try combining cool words to get something that stands out like the recent gunpowder milkshake. Great title, so-so movie. The more words you string together, like a phrase, the more likely no one else has used them. We need to do something, they look like people, and there's something about Mary are good examples of this. The world is your oyster here. Experiment and get creative. If you balk at this idea saying, Hollywood uses common words all the time, so why can't I? Well, it's true they do, and of course you can call your film whatever you want, but remember Hollywood has a multi-million dollar ad campaign alias recognizable talent, and so forth. That's why they can get away with vague titles like The Hours, Next, and Kate. Next up, I really like the titles with double meanings. They are cool and reveal a writer with creative flair. The obvious use of this is when your title literally means two different things. In Castaway, for example, Tom Hanks is an actual castaway on an island, and he's been cast away by his wife, who thinks he's dead. A double meaning can also be perceived as meaning one thing at the beginning of the movie and something different at the end. In John Ford's classic The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, we are led to believe one man is the subject of the title, but is that really true? You have to watch that and find out. It's a great one. Finally, a clever title is better than an ordinary one. I like titles that pop and crackle in your mouth like snappy dialogue. I realize it's not always appropriate to the story, but it sure is a lot of fun. Some good ones are Blazing Saddles, Zero Dark Thirty, and Pulp Fiction. And titles like these are not only fun to say, but hard to forget. As I move away from shorts and into marketing my first feature film, hashtag Bad Bones Movie, I'm more inclined than ever to follow these suggestions. When people are looking for something to watch online, your title is just as important as your poster and logline. And don't waste the opportunity to pique the interest of a potential viewer with something that grabs them. So make sure your title is great and grabby. Okay, so let's test my own films, all found here on YouTube, all shorts, uh, to see if they pass my title test. So the first one is Middle of Nowhere. It's a film I made a long time ago, one of my earliest short films. It does have a unique name. Checking the title against IMDb, uh, there are lots of titles that use Middle of Nowhere now, but 12 or 13 years ago when I originally titled it, uh, it wasn't used all that much, according to IMDb anyway. So I think it does get a point for being unique. It does have a double meaning, the people in the car, uh, are not only out in the boonies, but they're also caught in a time loop, so I think that works. And is it clever? Yeah, I'll go ahead and give myself a clever point. Sure, why not? So three out of three on this one, I think, does pretty well. This is a good title. Uh, the Payoff is Next. This is a movie I made as an undergrad at the University of Utah. Uh, is the title unique? Uh, not really. Uh, we've heard this title before. It, doesn't have, it does have a double meaning because the main character in the movie is paying to get his daughter back, and she actually does show up at the end. That is the actual payoff. Is it clever? Eh, not really. So I <laughs> think this gets one out of three. So it's just, it's a, not that great of a title. It's kind of ordinary. Uh, Midnight is up next. Midnight was a web series that I did in Utah. It was the first web series shot in Utah. Did this one a long time ago, 2009. Um, it's spelled M-I-D-N-Y-T-E. So it is unique, or it was unique. I think since then the spelling has been used a lot, like band names and events and things like that have used this but back then it was somewhat original and unique but i will say i am totally against now funky spellings of words for movie titles because you're going to have to spell it every time you tell someone about the movie like when i was uh, the website this movie is still at is midnight.tv and i have to tell people go to midnight.tv m-i-d-n-y-t-e every time so 
don't do that because you're going to lose people when they think it's spelled one way and they try and type in the web address and it's not spelled that way and you're not there to explain it to them and they won't see your stuff. So I, I'm not a fan of funny spellings anymore. Uh, does it have a double meaning? No. Uh, is it clever? Not really. I think this one gets one out of three. It's, it's okay. I should have spelled it the normal way though because it does have a meaning in the story but not a double meaning. All right, Kind of Famous is next. This was a uh, documentary I shot when I was also an undergrad. Is it unique? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of famous. Kind of. It was sort of riffing on Almost Famous, but I didn't want to use that. It was, it was a story of uh, this guy that I knew who was in a band in the 80s that almost got a big record deal, but not quite. Um, double meaning, no. Clever, not really. It's just kind of average. So one out of three on that one. Temp Insanity is one I made as a grad student. Uh, and that was a story of a temp who works in an office, who is just gets involved in a crazy, chaotic, nightmare scenario. So I like that name because it hasn't really been used, and IMDb still does not have a use of this uh, that they have listed there. Maybe someone else has used it, but I don't know about it. Um, double meaning, no. Is it clever? Yeah, I think so. So it gets two out of three uh, for that. Hostages, another short, super short I made in grad school. Uh, not unique at all. Double meaning, yes. So there are two people, one of them took the other one hostage and, the, and that one is still a hostage at the end because she's handcuffed to the side of a car. So I think it does have a double meaning. Is it clever? Eh, not really. How many times have you heard the word hostage in a movie title? Probably a thousand. So I would say not so much on this one. Uh, Meredith is the next one. It's probably one of my better short films from grad school. Uh, it does have a name, so it's not that grabby, but there aren't that many uh, movies called Meredith, if any, on IMDb. So it gets a point for being unique. And it does have a double meaning. Uh, and is it clever? Uh, not really, but two out of three here. Uh, this is one I'd actually recommend you watching. <laughs> it's one of my better ones, I think, and a good kind of character study. All right, Conversation Hearts is up next. This is one I think I made independent of school. I think I made it for my YouTube channel. Basically, the idea was uh, all the dialogue I was going to take was from Conversation Hearts, those little candies that have sayings on them. Um, and so this was kind of a weird, don't th really think I pulled this one off, but... Um, is it unique? Sure. Huh. I don't think there's any other movie called Conversation Hearts. Does it have a double meaning? No. Is it clever? No, not really. Um, so this one gets ranked fairly low. Collection Day was my thesis film um, that I did in grad school. Is it unique? Uh, not really. This is a working title for the movie that I never could think of a better name. Doesn't have a double meaning. Not really. Is it clever? Not really. So, I mean, the title is okay, but it, I mean, it could have been better. I just wasn't able to come up with something better. Uh, you know, it was a story about, you know, in the dystopian future, you had these collection agents that would go around collecting debts from the government by collecting something unspeakable from the people that owed money. So it's a decent movie, I think, kind of, <laughs> but uh, the title is just so-so. Uh, the last short film I made was Invader that I put up on YouTube. It's not really a unique title. There's lots of movies that are called Invader, have Invader in the title. Double meaning, yes, because you think one person is the invader and it's actually the other person. Um, is it clever? Nah, not really that clever, but it's it's okay. One out of three, I guess that's not a passing grade. And then you know, I have my upcoming movie feature film, Bad Bones. Uh, not another movie called Bad Bones. There is a short film, I think, in a TV series or an episode of a TV series that had Bad Bones as a title. But I still give myself a unique point because it's not there's not that much on IMDb, very little, and it's not, not another feature. Double meaning, yes, there is a double meaning. Triple meaning, perhaps, but you have to see the movie to figure out what that is when it comes out next year. Is it clever? I'll give myself a clever point. Why not? This is, I'm actually, the first time I named a movie with the intent of marketing it, so I was trying to give myself a good title. It's also alliterative, as you know, bad bones, two Bs. So hopefully it helps to sell the movie. Uh, to people that might be looking into it. Anyway, okay, so those are all my movies uh, rated or ranked according to the system that I've set up and presented to you. All these movies can be found on YouTube. I'll give you the links below if you're really interested. What are some of your favorite movie titles and why? Comment below, but don't reveal that great title you've been saving for a rainy day. I might steal it for my next indie feature. All right, not really, but you get the idea. Be careful out there.